Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is the plant-powered peddler, Janet. She has lost nearly 100 pounds following a plant-based diet and with the help of the Ultimate Weight Loss Reboot program, and she's here to tell her story. Welcome, Janet. Hello, hello. Here I am. <laughs> well, Glad to be I, here. I'm so happy to talk to you because, you know, everybody, especially, you know, we're still at the beginning of the year, loves a good success story. And I would love to hear yours. Oh, great. Well, I'll, I'm, I'd love to tell it. And I'm going to share my screen. And I got this little slideshow. So I'll start with this. I love your color, by the way. I mean, all the colors <laughs> you're wearing, they're beautiful. Thanks. So here I am. Next to my bicycle, I do a lot of riding, which is why I call myself the plant-powered peddler, and um, and and that's uh, what I mainly try to do is show people how to stay compliant when you're traveling. And I travel by bicycle and by plane and car, and uh, there's definitely things that I do to plan, 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 plan for my trips so that I can stay compliant. So this is not always what I've looked like. <laughs> this is me today. This is my bicycle and this is how I travel on the bike. And this front bag here is my refrigerator. So I carry a freezer pack in it and I can carry my lunch because usually when we're riding, we're riding all day. And uh, so I can take a lunch and keep it cool and safe to eat. And also when I go uh, grocery shopping at the end of each day to supply myself for that evening and breakfast and lunch the next day, then I've got a little cooler if I need it for getting stuff to, to wherever, wherever it is that we're staying. This was me. This was, I'm not at my heaviest here, but as a lot of us don't like pictures taking, taken of us, I'm, I'm no different. And I, and even any pictures that were taken of me, I would destroy them. <laughs> so one of my sisters had this picture because otherwise I wouldn't have had any. And so this is me on the left. And I was probably in the 180s in this picture. And the highest that I would look at was 199 and three fourths. And then I wouldn't weigh myself after that. And so I don't know how much over 200 I went, but I was pretty uncomfortable. So the first 40 pounds I was able to take off um, because I just stopped binging. And the, the way I stopped binging was I stopped dieting. And uh, so I was just, I call me hefty. Um, here was probably in the late 90s and I would hover between 150 and 160. And I just, I couldn't get under it. I mean, maybe for a minute or a second, but uh, it, it would never last. And then just before I found um, Chef AJ and went whole food plant exclusive, I was on a tour in Arizona and I saw my pictures and look at, this is me in the colorful shirt here, but I was pretty hefty. And I was, you know, right in that area of between 150 and 160. And um, I, I had pretty much given up dieting and I was just um, doing the best I could and just figured that that was it. That was as, as light I was going to be able to get as I was going to be able to get. But then I, uh, well, actually, the two of the people on that trip were vegan and they uh, lent us the video Eating You Alive. And after I watched that video, both my husband and I, we couldn't eat meat. We couldn't eat animals after that. It was just, what are we thinking? I mean, it just really woke us up to what we were doing to other sentient beings. And um, and then we went whole food in January of 2020. So it was right around COVID time when we were on the tour. And uh, when we got home, we just quit eating animals, but I was still eating some oil and, and um, some dairy. And then as I learned about eating whole food, 
I was able to realize, no, no, no more dairy, no, no more oil because of how it was actually putting weight on me, even, even eating whole food. I was gaining weight uh, because of the oil. Mostly, you know, I was making big salads and putting oil on the salads. It was just too many calories. So in the fall of 2020, I found Chef AJ and through her, through her calorie density talk and um, Dr. Lyle's pleasure trap and Dr. Goldhammer's pleasure trap, it really helped me to see the problem with uh, calorie dense foods and how eating them was preventing me from attaining the goals that I wanted to attain. So I got off the, the oil, I got off the dairy, I got off all the high density foods. I learned about staying to AJ's left of the red line, which meant I could eat all the non-starchy and starchy vegetables I wanted, fruit and grains and legumes. And so I started to do that and I lost so much weight. I, I went down to my Weight Watchers goal had always been 138. I went right by that. And then in um, 2022, I mean, 2021, I weighed 115 pounds. And then I, I faced this dilemma. Now, what do I do? I mean, never had, had I ever kept weight off. So I thought, what am I gonna do? Well, then, here, AJ's advertising the reboot. And I thought, I'm going to use the reboot. The reboot will help me keep this weight off. I mean, for the first time in my life, it'll help me to maintain my weight. So that's what I did. I signed up for the reboot in um, January of, of 2022. One of the things that I learned in the reboot is create a vision board. And so that's just what I did. John Pierre is one of the speakers on the reboot and he suggested this vision board. And, you know, I remember doing vision boards in school, in high school, and I thought, what a great idea. So I did this vision board. I went to the library and I got a bunch of the magazines that they didn't want anymore. And I, I found these pictures. And so one of the things that I, put on this was uh, to go to True North, which I ended up just getting back from a, a few weeks ago. And and then the pictures of the house, we were just starting a, a remodel and we just uh, got the final inspection done on the remodel of our little house that we have here. And it's amazing how this stuff comes true. <laughs> a year later, you look at it and you think, wow, a lot of this is, has come true. Um, so, that 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 got me started on the reboot and then this is some of the food that i ate just to just to show you how it's not it's not a diet i mean i got to eat so much food and i'm riding my bicycle a lot and taking walks and i lift weights and so i need calories so this program allows me to do that and it is the most sustainable program i've ever been on and i i just love vegetables. So having vegetables certainly wasn't a problem for me. And the fact that I could eat as much as I wanted, I was, I was a very, very happy girl. <laughs> so here is the rice cauliflower. I uh, learned about, you know, how much raw food can be so delicious and it's so high in nutrient in low in calorie density. It's just great. And then other things about the reboot here, I'm on a, I'm on a bike trip and, and I just couldn't believe that was me, <laughs> this little body. Um, but another thing about the, the reboot is you get to listen to Dr. Lyle and Dr. Goldhammer and ask him questions and John Pierre and Chef AJ. I mean, you just have access to all these wonderful people and the, in the community of um, Chef AJ's community. I just, I've been a member of uh, Feel Fabulous Over 40 for a couple of years now. And it's just wonderful to have people who get me, who, who know what it is that I'm going through. I got an air fryer. 
In fact, you can see behind me um, on my shelf here, I've got three instant pots. I got a, a, a three gallon, a six or quart, a six quart and eight quart. And I, I use them all. And then I've got, um, I've got a, a creamy and over there. Oh, my Nutra milk. <laughs> I'm under the influence, Chef AJ. <laughs> I just, I love all, all my tools in my shop. And here I learned how to make mustard. And I, I just love my mustard. Um, here's uh, AJ's chipotle burgers and potatoes and some vegetables that I'm cooking in my Breville and the wonderful mushroom, onion, and garlic combination. I just love all the wonderful food we can eat on this program. Here I'm on a bike trip, and it's just an example of the, the food I'm eating on my bicycle ride. Got a salad and uh, fresh cherries and a piece of corn. It's just so nice to be able to be active and, and be eating. Got some more pictures here. Lots of veggies, fruit, potatoes. <laughs> it's just, it's not a diet. It's just, it's eating. Here, the I do a lot of times the sequencing where I'll have my raw salad and then I'll have cooked non-starchy vegetables and then I'll have my starchy vegetable here too. Salad with the non-starchy veggies and then my potatoes on the side here. And there's some cooked veggies probably in that salad too. But I probably have them down low. Well, there's some of them on top here too. But here again, this actually looks like a True North meal. So when we we, we did True North, we went and we fasted a few days. That was just a couple of weeks ago, you know, long after the um, the reboot. And in True North, so here I, I did the reboot in January of 2022. And here it is almost January of 2023. And I stepped on the scale this morning and I was 116.2. So um, here I, for two years now, well, actually the 2021, I was just losing the weight. I was still losing the weight. 2022, I've maintained for a whole year. And I think... The most I ever weighed this year, the whole year. I don't think I, I keep stepping on the scale and it's like 117, 116. I don't think I weighed any different than those two weights this, this whole year. So it's pretty phenomenal. And another thing that uh, people always ask me is, you know, how long did it take you to lose the weight? Well, I started in July of 2020, and by December of 2021, I was down to the 115. And from in 2020, I lost the first 26 pounds, and in 2021, I lost another 16. So that last 16 pounds took me the whole 12 months to lose. And because I know what one of my buddies, she's frustrated that she she's not losing her weight faster. And I should have looked at this before for her to, to let her know that, hey, it took me 12 months. It's, you know, and I actually I was weighing myself every week. But when the weight started slowing down like, like that, I went from weighing twice in January to weighing once in February. You know, so I went to once a week weigh in in. in and in August and September, I didn't even weigh at all, just stayed away from the scale, probably got rid of it, you know, because it can just really mess with your mind to be weighing too much. And isn't that amazing? After a, a year, 12 months, I lost 16.4 pounds. So a little over a pound a month that I don't know, it just it goes slower when you're going down. And I was very, very compliant to I mean, I just, I was shocked that I was still losing weight to tell you the truth. I mean, I was just staying, staying with the lifestyle just because that's the way I plan to eat for the rest of my life. And, and the weight still kept coming down. So it's pretty amazing. 
I thought I would end this with, uh, you know, our wonderful potatoes and kabocha squash. I was baking this in when I was in Australia this year. So that's another thing. For all winter, for the whole year, we've been remodeling this little house that we bought in, in fall of 2020. And so all winter, I had no heat. I had no running water. Stephen would bring me five gallon buckets of, of water in order to do things in here. Um, the, one of the reasons I started getting all my plug-in appliances is because I didn't have a stove, didn't have a stove top, didn't have an oven. So I bought the Breville uh, oven and I an air fryer and I bought these Instapots be, because I could just plug them in. So the one thing I had was outlets. And you can just, you can cook anything with a Breville air fryer and, and instant pots. I, you know, I made soups and stews and I could make, I could bake anything I wanted in the Breville. So uh, it, it didn't stop me from being compliant. And I, there, I look at my calendar from all through the year. And I mean, we, we just had calendars full of, you know, people coming, things being delivered, needing to order things. Um, just, there was just constant change and stress, but I stayed compliant. And then, um, I took a 30 day bicycle trip up into Canada, stayed compliant the whole 30 days. Um, went to Australia for a month and stayed compliant, stayed at Airbnb and stayed compliant the whole time I was in Australia, including the plane ride there and the plane ride back because we left here on a Tuesday and we didn't get there to our Airbnb until that, that Friday. So I had to carry food for all those days because I don't trust that the food's going to be available, especially when you're in a plane and then shuttle to a hotel. And I mean, you're not really in a position where you can drive to a, a grocery store. But I did, for instance, what the day that we left here, we were going over to Seattle because it's quite a trip to get over to Seattle. And I found there was a grocery store a mile from the hotel. And so we brought food, but because we got there, it worked, everything worked really, we made all our connections and everything to get over there. Um, we had time. So we went ahead and walked to the store and got what we needed and then walked home. So we got a little exercise, got a little extra food, so then I could take what I had and take it with me. And I had more availability of food uh, when I got there. And then one of the uh, Feel Fabulous gals had lived in Perth, Australia. And she hooked me up with one of her buddies in Perth. And she and I uh, uh, communicated back and forth with email. And she and her husband came and picked us up at the airport and took us to a grocery store. So, I mean, by that time, four days, I was out of food. And that could have been tough, getting to the Airbnb and then getting to a grocery store and picking up compliant food. But because they picked us up and took us to a store, that bridged that. And we were able to, and they took us to this uh, Banera Fresh and it was all fruits and vegetables, grains and beans. I mean, <sighs> Who could ask for more than that? So we got plenty of groceries and we we got over to the Airbnb and we before we knew it, we had plenty to eat. And it just, it was wonderful. And then the last trip, we we went to True North and we were both so skinny, we couldn't even do the the 10 day fast. I, I lasted five days and my husband lasted six days. And then we had to start eating because we were below BMI for the first time in my life. So it's just, it's just the most amazing thing. So I highly recommend the reboot. I mean, you know, whether you're you're needing to lose the weight or you're trying to get off that last 10 pounds or you're wanting to maintain and you've never had to maintain in your life or never, never been able to, the reboot is just a highly, every day you can get up and you can listen to things and and look at things. There's, there's menu suggestions, Dr. Goldhammer and Dr. Lyle and, and John Pierre. John Pierre is wonderful. I'm I'm going to go see him in Chicago in May. He's having a a, a four day thing, and he's just he's just the most compassionate man. He's 
he's the the male version of chef aj and just such amazing people you know just they'll just do anything that to to help us to see and i i listen to to um the live show every day and just anything i can do to help reprogram this mind to this new lifestyle this 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 lifestyle that is a new old lifestyle because it's it's just eating the way we we always used to eat before all this processed food and and fat sugar and salt came aboard and, and uh um waylaid us all so i'm i'm just so thankful that i found it now um so today i actually i have a couple of recipes that i was going to make for you and um so i'm going to quit sharing yeah. my super I'm, I'm curious janet how did you cook the kabocha squash i just i'm trying to think if i usually i'll put them in my, my instapod here to cut them in half and i you know what i think i did is i i started them cooking and i just cooked them like i do the in the instapot you know you just cook them long enough to get them softer and then i took it out and I cut it in half and deseeded it and stuck it back in the oven. Doesn't that look good? And it was too. It really <laughs> does. You said you make your own mustard. How do you make it? Is it yellow mustard or Dijon or stone ground? It's it's the uh, uh, raw food romances mustard, Lissa, in her, oh, yeah, her sauces, dips, and dressings. And it makes a whole bunch like like you like to do. And, and, and I like to do. I love to batch cook. And it lasts forever. And so, I mean, I have the no salt uh, mustard that you can buy, but they just sell the smaller containers of it and it's all that plastic. And I just thought, I'm gonna try to make my own mustard. And really, you know, all you need is a, a container of mustard seed, which I got from Amazon. You know, I got a big one and some uh, vinegar. <laughs> and and I, I'd have to look it up to see what else is in it, but it's just, I make it all the time now. So in fact, I had to stop and go ahead and use up my little containers of mustard because I I had bought a whole flat of them. And um and I'm I got my might as well use it. Because otherwise it's just gonna sit in there and I don't know what happens to mustard after a certain amount of time. But but uh so that's what I'm doing now is just using up the, the no salt mustard that you you get. I can't remember what it's called. You? Uh wet uh wet spray? Yeah, yeah. 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 Any other questions or? No, I mean, well, I'm, I'm sure I do have questions. Are you wanting to do your recipe now or do you want me I, to ask questions now? Well, either way, I it won't take me long to do the recipes because they're um, one's in the food processor and one's in the blender. So Great. Well, then I will ask you a few questions if you don't mind. Yeah. First of all, because people are probably going to know because you showed a, a full length photo of yourself. How tall are you? Oh, just short of five five. Okay, great. Yeah. And had you heard about a plant based or a vegan diet before? You know, we had tried Dean Ornish's by uh, Eat More, Way Less in the nineties, but he didn't have the flower addiction component there. And um, and I'm a huge flower addict, and it just I it didn't it didn't work. I mean, we would take. We would we actually got one of those bread makers and we were making bread so that we didn't put any fat in it so we were making our own bread but then we eat tons of it you know i mean a fresh baked loaf of bread straight out of the the oven is it, it smells wonderful as you know and uh you just consume way too much we had to get rid of the thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. A lot of people understand like how addictive sugar is, but they don't put flour in the same category. Man. Well, I like yeah. what you said that the way you eat now is really just the way people ate throughout most of human history. In other words, food. Yeah. Yeah, that's yep. real food. Yeah, let's see. I had another question. Um, what am I going to ask? I took some notes. Oh, yeah. So how long did it take you to lose the weight? So um, in in I started in July of 2020, and it took until December of 2021. So a year and a half. 
That's great. People expect yes. it very quickly. Would you agree? Yes. Yes. And, and the thing is, like I say, you know, if you slow down with losing weight, stop weighing yourself, just keep eating this way and it'll keep coming off until your body doesn't need to take any. So you don't have any more fat. I mean, I just, I don't have any fat anymore. And you know, what's amazing is all the foods you showed, even your travel food looked absolutely delicious. And it was too. I mean, there was one place that I was at when we were on the bike trip where it was in a national park and they just had a little park store. And I thought, oh, what am I going to do? Because I, I had planned ahead and brought enough food to last through the, the park stay. But I'd forgotten about how then when you leave the park, you need something to eat. You know, when we're riding, I needed something to eat for the for breakfast and lunch. So I went to the store and I found this bag of coleslaw. You know, just green cabbage, red cabbage, and some shredded carrot. And then they had a little produce section in their store. And I found a tomato, an English cucumber, an orange, an apple, a lime. And I just, you know, whatever I could get. And I made this huge salad that fed me that dinner, breakfast the next morning, and, and lunch that next day um, with some other things. But it's amazing what you can come up with eating whole food, even in a tiny little national park store. <laughs> did you struggle with weight most of your life? Yes. Yes, I did. You know, when I hit puberty, 12 years old, I just blew up, you know, and I was a tomboy and I was getting all this curve stuff and I, I didn't know what to do with it. I was like, what, what? I wanted my skinny body back and uh, it disappeared until now i'm 67 years old wow <laughs> you look amazing yeah, Thank you. Awesome. did you try other methods to lose weight tons you name it weight watchers diet workshops schwartz um stillman's water diet the grapefruit diet uh janine raw breaking free from compulsive or um body for life I tried body for life three 12 week sessions in a row and I couldn't, I, I mean, I, I, I could get down to like 140 and then everything stalled because I still didn't have your calorie density lecture. And I didn't understand with the pleasure trap, how the brain is just going to seek pleasure and avoid pain. And it, and it's, it's wants the calorie dense foods and once I understand that now I can ignore it say oh you be quiet you know just tell my mind stop it I know you're just it's a primitive <clears throat> desire and I'm not gonna fall for it <laughs> what what do you think was different about this program why was this time different well definitely uh, there's there's so much research that's behind it and there's all these doctors and of course, you know, I'm always listening to um, Dr. McDougall and Dr. Goldhammer and Dr. Lyle and you, all the people that you're interview. And it, they're so inspiring. Like, remember that Canadian couple where he, he had uh, kidney cancer and she was a hundred pounds overweight. I love those two. I would listen to that again and again and again. And it just, I was just so inspired by those and, and, and Amy and, in Florida, be green with Amy. I was just with her on Wednesday and um, just, the, wow, there, there's just so much more to be able to listen to and keep myself on track with. And then just even the availability of the food. I mean, it's just real food. I can go in a grocery store, go straight to the produce and just be surrounded by things that I can have. I mean, I, I don't even go down the other aisles anymore. I mean, now I understand. Don't do that to my brain. Don't go down, you know, the packaged aisles because it's going to, it's going to want that. And, um, oh, it just makes such, a, there's so much more support for it. Don't you think than there used to be? Absolutely. Do you ever worry about regaining? Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I still, I'm still afraid to step on the scale. Like this morning, I thought I'm going to step on the scale though. So I can tell AJ what I weigh today. And and then it's 116.2. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> you would think I'd be, be 
be happy to do it, but I'm just still, I'm afraid that because that's what used to happen is no matter what I would try to do, thinking I was doing the right things, I would be putting weight back on again. And, and it's just, it's such a miracle. I, 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 I'm just going to give myself time to get used to it because <laughs> it, you know, it's happening like for a whole year. What have other people up. said about your success? Well, you know, the, that group that I bicycle with, we've all become vegan, but I was really the, the only one that needed to lose a bunch of weight. Although everybody dropped weight, but you know, a lot of them were, were pretty well thin already. Um, so they were concerned, like I was going to, um, uh, be anorexic. And so I'd say, well, have me over. I'll, I'll show you what I eat, you know? <laughs> and once they saw what I could eat, they were, they weren't worried about that anymore. Um, it's interesting, isn't it? How people won't say a thing about when you're gaining weight, but then when you're losing weight, they're like, are you sure? Are you sure you should be losing this weight? And you look so thin. It's like, what, how come you never say anything about to me about being overweight? I mean, I was that most of my life and I've got tons of energy, you know, I mean, so for the most part, I mean, I, I hang around with my little group and they're all I hang around with because we do vegan potlucks. Um, you know, I don't have to worry about lots of junk food when I'm with this little group. And I've also started a pod, you know, Nelson Campbell's pod network. And so I, I have this pod and I, I, I'm doing some videos and showing them how to prepare things. And, you know, that's really where I want most of my folks to be is just helping people make the shift that are interested and want to, and um, just staying surrounded with this little world now, because I want to stay here. I want to stay the course and, and keep going with this. You know, it's so interesting that you mentioned when you're losing weight, people are always telling you you're too thin. And it's usually people not as thin as you, but when you're heavy or eating unhealthily, they don't say anything. Dr. Lyle actually just addressed that the last time he was on the show. Fascinating, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Have you had any, what I call snacksidents? You know, not really. I mean, I am so not interested in, in, Unfood, what would we call it? Stuff yeah. that isn't food. I mean, I would much rather be eating food and I just, I don't want it. I don't want to go back there. I hear you. That's fantastic. Now I make things within our, our ability, you know, like, like even your, your oatmeal cookies. I, I make them with buckwheat because buckwheat's a whole food and I dehydrate them and I've got a creamy and I just love my creamy. I made a, a creamy with aquafaba and uh, mango the other day and one with aquafaba and banana after we watched the gal who did the whip, the aquafaba whip and says she freezes it and, and it makes a soft whip. And I said, oh, can you make creamy out of it? And she didn't know. I thought, well, I'm going to try. <laughs> so I have treats, but they're within our lifestyle. Right, right. And in case people aren't familiar with the term creamy, you mean the ice cream making machine that you can do with completely plants with no sugar. It's the Ninja Creamy. The Ninja Creamy. Yes, that makes the sorbets. Oh, I just love it. The That's pineapple. Cool. Yeah, you don't have one behind you. I see it looks like three pressure cookers and an air fryer. Right. Here. There's your Ninja. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that is a fantastic machine. Do yes, you have any, did you have any cravings at the beginning or do you have any now? You know, I crave real food now. I just and I I do make really attractive food, you know, the the salads and everything. And I just can't wait to dig into it. Um I, I crave potatoes and so I eat them. <laughs> um I, I really, I don't go out. In fact, on the, um, on the bicycle trip, all of us started out vegan and everybody went to restaurants, but me, and they all succumbed to things that weren't quite, you know, on their lifestyle plan. And, uh, it's a slippery slope. And so I just don't go. I think I've gone out maybe twice 
in the whole time that I've been on this plant-based whole food program. And, you know, because even vegan places have oil and sugar and salt in them. Um, I, I, I know that sometimes I'll, I'll have a little bit of salt in something. Um, like even uh, sauerkraut that I get at Costco, I'll rinse it and soak it, but there'll be salt in that. So I'm not 100% salt free. But as far as refined sugar and uh, flour and um, oil, I, I, I'm kind of repulsed by it. I, I don't want it. No, I understand. People, though, I think a lot of times you never know who's going to land on a video. They think no sugar, no oil, no salt. That sounds pretty extreme. I know. And and yet they're taking 13 medications, <laughs> going to doctor's appointments every month, you know, and, that, and to me, that's extreme. I, I'd much rather eat real food and, and it tastes so wonderful. You can actually taste different tastes instead of coating your mouth with, with oil and lining it with salt. And so that's really, you know, mostly what you taste, even though you don't realize it, you get off that stuff and you taste real food. It sounds to me like you always were pretty physically active, though, at, at every size. Yeah, I was, I was, you know, a tomboy growing up. And then I married my high school sweetheart and started working. And, and he, I, I grew up in alcoholism. And so I didn't realize what alcoholism was. And he was an alcoholic. And um, I, I became very sedentary. I, I got a, I had a job in a, in a, a plant, a, a Delaware electronics plant. And so I was sitting and winding coils and I had different jobs in there, but I put on quite a bit of weight working there and, and I was married. And so I, I sort of became my mother in that first marriage. And within three years, I, I had to get out and I, I kind of eat, tried to eat my way out of <laughs> the predicament. And uh, so I got pretty heavy and out of shape to the point where when I did get out of it and I went back to school, to, I went to a college and there was a track that was nine times around was a mile and I couldn't run around at one time. <laughs> so that was as out of shape and, and, you know, just flabby as I ever got. But then I started working out again and exercising. And even though I stayed heavy, I slowly got more fit. That's great. What do people say about the large quantities of food you eat? <laughs> Whoa. What's the one thing that Goldhammer says? They should say, you're going to eat all that. That's definitely what I get. <laughs> yeah, They're I'm, used to me now, my buddies. Yeah. I love when people finally understand calorie density and they don't have to limit their portions or weigh and measure. But what about starch? I mean, you actually eat starch, potatoes, rice, beans. Yes. And it's so satiating. What a difference it makes, especially, you know, I was always extra active and I would try to go on these calorie restrictive diets and I would just be starving. And then, you know, I would do things like uh, I'd have this bag of nuts because that that's pretty common to take nuts on a bicycle, but I would eat the whole thing when I got back because I was so hungry and it's just way, way too many calories. I mean, it just undid anything that exercise, any benefit the exercise might have given me as far as weight loss. And that's where I totally agree that exercise is not a good way to lose weight. Oh. I proved it. <laughs> You notice that people still are afraid to eat, even in your group, you know, because I talked to your group the other day and they're asking me, well, how much is a serving of beans or, I mean, like, I don't know how hungry you are, you know, for me, it's a couple of pounds. So you notice people are still afraid to eat starch. Definitely. Yes. But you're not, you had two big kabocha squashes. <laughs> Aren't they good? Oh gosh. And kabocha squash isn't even really that many calories, is it? Oh my gosh, I believe that winter squashes are something like 200 calories per pound. They're so good. I love the butternut squash. I love the, the kabocha curry and the, the uh, made either with kabocha or butternut. You know, I we grow kabochas now and I'll get about a dozen of them. And I've got this tote just full of them that I can cook now all winter long because I grew them in my garden this summer. Want to tell us what you eat in a day? Everybody loves to know. 
Sure, sure. Well, um, for breakfast, I'll typically make a big salad. And so I'll make enough salad for two meals because I'll usually have two meals a day where I'll have the big salad. And in the salad is just like what I showed the pictures of where it'll be a, a combination of, of uh, mostly raw vegetables and some raw fruit. And then I, I, I'll either have a bowl of cooked vegetables on the side or I'll, I'll add them to my salad. And so breakfast is just the raw vegetable one with some raw fruit, raw fruit and vegetable. Lunch, I'll add the, the cooked vegetables and then I'll add uh, usually sweet potato. And then dinner, uh, lately it's winter and so we've been making soup. So I've got lentil soup. Um, my sister had made us lima bean soup and usually I'll have Oh, the other, one of the uh, interviews I did, I made my soup while I'm on the bicycle. While you're and, riding it? Well, no, but so I'm on a tour and I carry a rice cooker with me when I'm on tour. And so when I get to the, the room at night, I'll actually cut up onion and garlic and zucchini, carrot, potato, and I'll make a soup in my rice cooker. And that's what I'll eat for my dinner on the, the bike ride. So everybody else goes out to dinner, but I stay in my room and I cook this soup. Um, and so I, I like to have usually a few different kinds of soup and then I, I mix them, you know, so like I'll have a, like the kabocha curry is really thick and then I'll mix it with um, lentil soup. And so it makes the lentil soup nice and creamy. That's fantastic. Well, I'd love to see what recipes you're going to show us. And I'm sure I'll think of a few more questions while I watch you. Yeah. Okay. So my first is a, let's see, I got, maybe I, I can, I need an, a bigger view here. How's that? Do you care if that's, I, I want to get the. Yeah, I can the, see your beautiful food processor. What kind of food processor is that? This one's a Cuisinart, darn it, because I, I didn't understand about the, the, um, is it a Breville that has a really oh, nice yeah. food processor? So my next one will be a Breville. And then I've got the Vitamix blender. You got all the tricks of the trade. <laughs> That's right. You know, my husband, he has a wood shop and he has all the tricks of the trade for him. And I realized this is my wood shop. This is where I like to, to uh, you know, explore and experiment with things. So I'm, I'm going to get some tools for me. So that's what I did. So. I've got a bunch of cranberries. So I thought I'm going to make a couple of cranberry dishes today because I need to start using these, these cranberries. So this is 12 ounces of cranberries. And I took this recipe from you, Chef AJ, and from Tammy Kramer and from Lissa from Raw Fruit Romance. I've made each of your relishes or chutneys. And then I sort of developed this rendition, which is an incorporation of all three recipes. Nice. So I, Melissa uses a lot of dates and I would rather use fruit. So I, I'm using more, I'm not actually using any dates in this today. This is a cup of pineapple. And then I've got some mandarin oranges and a pear in here. And I didn't roast the pear, it's just a, a fresh pear. And then I thought, well, I'm gonna put a regular orange in there too. And there's three mandarin oranges. It's going to make a bunch, but Stephen and I love this stuff. What do you use the cranberry relish for? We put it on everything, to tell you the truth. We put it on our salads. We put it on our non-starchy steamed vegetables. Um, we'll, oh, we'll even use it. That's interesting, vegetables. Yeah. We'll dip our potatoes in it or when I do russets. I'll do them in the air fryer. And we'll, we'll have, I make all these different sauces like your compliant ketchup and the barefoot dressing. And then this cranberry, we'll put it all in a little dipping dish and we'll dip the potatoes in, in all of it. <laughs> I've never had regular potatoes with relish, but I've had sweet potatoes. Uh huh. I've got uh, a lot of people, put, a lot of people put it in oatmeal. Oh yeah, you know I haven't been eating much oatmeal lately. Um, and then the zest from the the oranges. 
And this juice was lime, uh, lemon juice. And I, I'll use lemon or lime juice interchangeably. I love them both. And then I'm going to put a little jalapeno in here just for some zip. Wow, that now see now that's why it's now it's sounding more savory. Yeah. Well, you know, being a chutney or a relish, it's a little, little bit of both. And then I actually got some spices here. I've got a little bit of nutmeg, cinnamon, mustard, and uh wait a minute. <laughs> My old age. What's the little brown spice? Cloves. A little bit of cloves. Not funny. I couldn't think of the word cloves. I want, I've had the same bottle of cloves for like 10 years. You don't use a lot of cloves. You don't. I mean, it just takes a little bit to give it a little bit of pizzazz. Okay. Well, I'm just going to pulse it. The relish. So I don't want it to get too. Yeah. Mm, that looks good. Uh, uh. Let's see here. I love this little kitchen. <laughs> of course, I suppose I'd love every, anything is without having seen how I didn't have anything. The other thing I like to put in this is your suggestion of the cherries. The, yeah, the cherries um, little bag of cherries. Yeah. Cherries are great in cranberry relish. That's, I like that. Let me just, as you say, plate this a little bit. Mm. So cool. Do you do any kind of batch cooking, Janet? I love batch cooking. Oh, there we go. Well, there's my cranberry rel cran cran relish. You can oh, see little yeah. bits of jalapeno in there. Maybe I better try it, huh? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. Mm. Why do you think batch cooking is so important? I like always having available food ready, you know, in case I come in, especially being an active person, you know, when I'm hungry, I'm, I'm hungry. I don't have any fat anymore. So I always have sweet potatoes because I love to just grab a, a sweet potato out of the refrigerator. If I'm real hungry, it hits the spot, you know, to hold me over while I'm, it might take me a little bit longer to, to put a salad together or even heat something up. So um, I always have the white. Well, actually today, well, for instance, this morning, I had this bag of of um, different colored potatoes. So I just threw them in the Instapot and cooked them all up. And that way I've got my you know, the different potatoes. I want a sweet potato. I have a purple potato. <laughs> and um, I always have soups in the freezer so that if we come home after, say, doing a um, uh, an afternoon of grocery shopping and we're starving, we could just heat up some some soup. Um, we always have a, a jar of, of rice, cooked rice in the fridge. I just think you should always have something ready so that you're never tempted to um, to grab something that isn't compliant, although we have a clean environment. So <laughs> next, next question was, is how clean is your environment? And do you think that makes yeah. a difference? Uh, oh, that is huge. I mean, you know, always before Stephen, my husband, he was always very slender. And it's just been in the last, say, five years that he started to develop a stomach. And for the first time in his life, he couldn't, couldn't get rid of it. And so when we went whole food, he lost 35 pounds. And so for the first time in his life, he doesn't want to put that back on. And so he agreed to a clean environment because always before then I would try to be 
you know, taking off weight and he'd say, you're no fun anymore. And I mean, he was that, what you would call an unsupportive husband, but he just didn't get it. He didn't understand. He never had to lose weight. And so now he gets it and he's very supportive. He's a hundred percent on board. And um, I'll even make things for him. Like I'll, I'll make him corn tortillas because I don't want him to have the ones that have chemicals in them or, or things that he shouldn't be eating. And I love to make tortillas. That was one of the things I thought about making today. How do you and, make them? I, I've, I've made flour ones a long time ago, but how do you make the corn ones? You know, you just grab this corn, this maca, which is just corn and a, and a trace of lime. And I get both the, the yellow and the white masa and you just add water to it and you mix it up and then you let it rest for like, you know, half hour. I just do something else for a while. And then you, I have a little uh, press. Let me show you my press. I went to a Mexican store and got this tortilla press. They make the tortillas there in New York, in Mexico. I'm sorry, because when you you tra your voice trailed away. Oh, do they make tortillas at the resort? Absolutely, they make their own every day. So here's here's my press, and so you put your your tortilla ball in here, and and you have I have these plastic rounds that I cut out, and so you put the the uh, mesa on this so that it doesn't stick to the wood board. And you just press it and then you toss it into a, I've got a, a nonstick electric uh, fry pan and I just cook them on there or I'll put them in a, on a pan and a, on my, I've got a stove top now. And I just, you turn them two or three times, three times, two times. So you're on one side, flip it, and then you flip it again for about like two minutes for each side. And then you just pile them up and, and it makes them a whole bunch of uh, tortillas. And he loves to toast them or heat them up. And and uh, and then I know he's, he's eating healthy stuff. And you know, he needs a few more calories than I do. So as long as I don't have one, I'm fine. And then we just freeze them. So I'm not tempted to, they're not in my, vision so so far i've been okay with them. what's um, the best part of your weight loss journey <laughs> being thin <laughs> eating all i want i mean it's just the most amazing thin thing well so, that's a freudian slip it's just the most amazing thing <laughs> <laughs> my my girlfriend emmy she's she's five foot and weighs 100 pounds and she lost a bunch of weight going vegan too and uh, she's given me all her clothes because she can't wear her clothes. And so here I am wearing little Emmy's clothes. I'm, I'm wearing a small. I mean, I can't even get used to that. When I, if I pick something up like at Costco, you know, it's, I can do a medium, but I, to, but a small is really hard for me. And I have to take it back, the medium back and, and get a small because they're too big. You know, I'm curious, you had your success in your mid 60s. And so many people have tried so many times to lose weight and have not had your success. So what would you say to people maybe that have given up hope? You know, I gave up hope. I I, I gave up. And I but but always with an ear and an eye open. I mean, just, you know, if you if you've given up, or you feel you want to give up, just always be open to a possibility because I'm so glad that, that, you know, when, when we found out Charlie and, and Carol were vegan, we were rolling our eyes, you know, like, oh my gosh, what are they doing now? Um, although, you know, when, when President Clinton went vegan, I, that really impressed me how he dropped all that weight. And, it, it, and I mean, I thought the same things as other people I said, wow, that must be really hard and, and restrictive, but it's not, it's so freeing. I eat more beautiful food than I ever ate. And, you know, animal food is boring. It's, it's ugly and, and it's brown and white. And I mean, there's, there's nothing, it's pretty restrictive because you only have chicken, pork, beef, and fish. I mean, what's exciting about that? Nothing. 
Absolutely. What do you think was the most valuable part of the Reboot program for you? Boy, I so enjoyed every day getting up and having something to listen to. I I think it just keeps you motivated. Every day you can listen to things and you can re-listen to things and you've got, there's recipe suggestions and um, there's just so much valuable information. You know, I was like a sponge. I just, I just love listening to this over and over and over again. I, I think it's, I, you know, I can't wait to do it again. Well, you are That's everything. I just want to clarify for people that are on the fence for joining the program. You are a success story and yet you're still joining it again. Uh, you know, and the, the kick sugar challenge and the feel fabulous over 40, I, all of it. I, I, and, and having a buddy, I mean, uh, I'll be buddies with Susanna my whole life because she's she she and I just get each other. I just you, you just meet people and you get surrounded with a way of life that will change your life forever. What would you say to somebody that's on the fence whether they should take it because we only offer it twice a year, January and then the fall. You know what better way to get January? What better way to start a new year than a than a process that'll help you? throughout the whole year and years to come. I mean, I just go for it. Just go for it. You're, you're worth it. I mean, same with me. I'm going to spend more money on, you know, trying to lose weight, but it's the most worthwhile. It's, it's the one thing that really helped me to achieve what I wanted to do. I mean, how could I not love this program? It's just, I plan on being around for a long time. <laughs> Right. Well, well, congratulations on your success. What have your friends and family said about it? Family, you know, but, you know, it's great for me, but none of them are, are able to do it. It's just heartbreaking to watch them go down. I've got a twin brother who's, who's got Alzheimer's. Um, my older brother has Alzheimer's. My mom and dad are both gone um i've got i've got two sisters and my younger sister lives here above my garage and um, i'm always trying to influence her and and uh um i just so hope that she she comes on board because we're we're all getting older and there's things that are happening physically you know like the inability to to come up with a word and and remember and uh dementia is so prevalent in in the older ages right now and i think it's from the the animal products and the processed food it's just really and of course the toxic environments i mean just there's so much our bodies have to put up with now well i i'm really impressed by your story and especially the fact that you didn't do it until your mid 60s so when people think well it's too late for me it's not no, it's no, I never too late if you don't start now. Well, I hope people will join the program and for no other reason to meet you in the private group and glean from your knowledge. Oh, I hope so too. I mean, I, anybody who wanted to ask me any questions, I, I just, I love talking about this. I just love being surrounded with it. Will, so. we, will we have a book to uh, look forward to like meals to pedal by? Well, I've, I've started the YouTube channel, uh, Plant Powered Peddler, and I, I like to, you know, show how I make things. And because so many of us, when we first do this, wonder what, what do I eat? What do I eat? And I, and I hope to help people see how simple it is and how fun it is to, to make things this way. So make sure you give me that link and I'll link below in the show notes. Oh, Okay. Do you want me to do that? Are we done? Or do you want oh, me to Oh, I didn't do know the... you had another recipe. Please. Yeah, go. yeah. The cranberry dressing. So oh my gosh, gonna... thank you. Of course. Okay. So this is a, a, a this very similar to the relish, but with just a little bit of a, a shift, you can make it into a dressing that you can put into these these bottles and they'll squirt uh, you know onto salad. So it's again 12 ounces of cranberries. Here, I've just gotten two large oranges. And 
and then the um, the zest from the oranges. And, I, and a lime. I did a lime for this one. And so there's zest from the lime. Here's the lime. This one I'm putting a couple of dates in, three dates. And I soaked it in water. Them in water. And pitted them. <laughs> and actually, I'm going to put a little bit of savory. I'm going to put some garlic and some jalapeno in this one. Three cloves of garlic and a, a half of a jalapeno. And then I actually had a half of one in the uh, leftover. And so I went ahead and have that and put some of it in here and some of it in the, the relish. And then I've got a half a cup of balsamic. So a little bit more fluid in this one to make it runnier for a dressing. Where's my top? Hmm. Oh, right here. So this will mute with Zoom, right? It should. Okay. What do you guys think? Isn't she inspiring? In her 60s. I didn't lose my weight until I was in my early 50s. So don't give up. Or if you give up, get up one more time. There's so many success stories on this channel. People have lost hundreds of pounds. All right. So here, you can see this just pours. That's very pretty. It just makes a great dressing. Would you give me those to put in the show notes? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I see you're wearing your True North sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. I, have I so enjoyed it there. That's great. That's well, and it's so fun people in the reboot they the people don't realize i don't think dr goldhammer and dr lyle do three hour monster q and a's with any other program and it's really hard, nice to get their undivided attention for this class and it was so fun meeting chef bravo he's so animated when he's when he's doing a class in front of us you know there at true north and um and then his sous chef mariko mauricio oh, mauricio mauricio he was wonderful too. He did a core, uh, class for us too. I mean, a demonstration. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And thank you so much for sharing your wonderful experience with adopting a plant exclusive SOS free diet and taking the reboot program. I look forward to ha having you because it's going to start in about a week. I know. I'm so looking forward to it. Let's, let's, let's have another reboot. Yay. All right. Thanks so much, Janet. You bet. Thanks. And of course. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow for another fabulous guest.